I have spent so much of my life sort of under a cloud and weight of my responsibilities, what other people wanted me to do, who other people wanted me to be, and not really being myself. And in doing that, feeling like not really celebrating who I was or what the day was, not feeling the day. Hey, it's Jocelyn and welcome to Five Tip Friday. And today I am talking a little bit, well, a lot <laughs> about how to feel your day. And this relates so much to my slogan that I have, which is celebrate life and soar free. And the reason I chose that is because I have spent so much of my life sort of under a cloud and weight of my responsibilities, what other people wanted me to do, who other people wanted me to be, and not really being myself. And in doing that, feeling like not really celebrating who I was or what the day was, not feeling the day, kind of just going through the motions of the day, getting through it. Um, sometimes when I was in uh, and my, the abusive marriage that I was in 20 years ago, it was get up and try to go through certain things so that I would hit this part of the day and I would then get to that part of the day and then I would know I, I had this much more and then go to bed and then wake up as late as I could so that I could, you know, stay up as late as possible and, and not really feeling the day, trying to numb myself even from the day. And what I have come to is realizing that that is not even living life. That's just existing. And I wanted to do more than that. I wanted to learn how to celebrate my life each day. I wanted to learn how to feel my life each day and to soar free from the chains of my own beliefs. And so that's why I celebrate life and soar free is so important to me. And I was watching a Brian Bouchard video, Brandon Bouchard video, <laughs> and he was talking a little bit about this, this idea of feeling the day. And it really connected so much with me that I wanted to be this to be my five tip Friday for this week, five tips on how to feel your day. Because I know you are like me in many ways. I know that there are moments where you're living your life and you're, you're, you're not really feeling what's going on. You're doing as much as you can to keep distracted, just swiping on the, on the phone, watching the videos, smoking pot, drinking alcohol, whatever it is that you might be doing, playing video games, whatever it is to distract you from feeling because feeling can be scary because there is so much pain from our experiences in our bodies that if we start to feel that, will we become overwhelmed? And I just want to tell you that as we, you, you know, we can, you can move through this in step-by-step -step process, but when you start to feel your day, you start to be able to really celebrate who you are. And I understand how scary it is. And also it's not like you can just suddenly do all these things and you're starting to just feel your day and celebrate life every single day. It is a constant battle for me. It is constant work. It is, it is always, you know, fighting that villain in my head, quieting it down so I can hear the superhero in my heart as I learn to, to really appreciate the imperfections of who I am in living my life unique to myself, because it is my imperfections that make me beautiful and unique and are the joy of who I am. And the world out there wants to tell us who we're supposed to be. The world out there, the other people want us to be a certain way because that makes them feel comfortable. Our society, as a political scientist, right? I have a PhD in political science and I have been taught over and over again about these rules and structures and institutions and power relationships that have been created in order to control and contain people. And it's been done in a certain way based on fear, because if you can create fear in people, then you can control them. And we have, that to me is what needs to change. So as I learn to be who I want to be for me, unique to me, only me in all my imperfections and be okay with that, 
then I learn to truly celebrate life and soar free, to feel my day the way that is unique to me. And that is what I want to share to other people because I know other people are out there who are in that same place of feeling the weight of the world upon them because people basically have told them that who they want to be in their hearts is crazy, stupid, dumb, not right. And I'm here to tell you it's okay. You can be your crazy self. You can be who you want to be. You can follow your heart and let go of the villains in your head. And you don't need my permission, but if you did, there you go. <laughs> so by five tips, start with one, just really getting to know yourself, just listening to yourself, listening to your body. You know, it goes back to for the first three are really the three rings of three rings warrior. And the first ring is how we interact with ourselves, taking time to do some meditation, taking time to just sit maybe out and outside and, and, and close your eyes and listen to your body going into your body. Where's your pain? And, and uh, I, so I, pull I do tarot reading and I'll pull a card and then do a writing on it. And the one that I wrote was ask body. And one of the thoughts that came to mind was, you know, my head hurts, my neck hurts, my back hurts, my hip hurts, my knees hurt. I've got to stop carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. <laughs> you know, we often, that's where that, that idea came from is really, you know, we often, experience our own self through these responsibilities that we've taken on of who we're supposed to be. And that weight creates pain in our bodies. Um, and so look at where you have pain, look at what your body is telling you and ask yourself what you can let go, what you no longer need. And that then starts to be that first part where we can feel our day by accepting who we are for who we are and not have to be who anybody else wants us to be. There's four things that, that Lisa Nichols says that I, I really love. And, and I, I taught, tell myself over and over again is, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to defend. I have nothing to protect and I have nothing to prove. And when you own those four things, you become free of what other people think about you. And I think that is so beautiful. So the first part of feeling your day is just accepting you for who you are right now, who you are in your being, who you are with all your imperfections and, and incorrectness and accepting that person with love and understanding because you are amazing and beautiful just the way you are. And that's number one. Number two is the second ring. And that is how we interact with other people. And when we can take a moment and create space for others, that is when we start to connect heart to heart. In other words, we often go through our day in motion. In we might say hello, we might say, how are you doing? But do we really, really listen for what the, that answer is? Um, even in our interactions with the, our families around us, are we really hearing what they're saying? And especially hearing what they're not saying, what is in their eyes, what is in their being? Um, some of my most painful moments was when I was looking uh, before my breakup with my husband this last year, was looking at him and seeing the pain that he was experiencing. I could see it in his eyes. I can see it in his being. I hadn't heard him laugh in a while and wanting to help him and not under not knowing how. I have tried in the ways that I knew and it wasn't working. And, and that, you know, that, that ability to, to hear the other person, to see it, um, that then has, the, has us an ability to, to feel the day. Now, in that instance, I wasn't feeling all that great, but it allowed me to start to move into myself too and to realize how could I change myself so I could start to change my environment around me. And indeed, my whole environment did change. <laughs> Sometimes it changes in ways you don't think it's going to, <laughs> but it did. But then it is really when we create those moments of space where maybe holding on to that eye contact a little bit longer, maybe when we're in the grocery store and we, we we're checking out and we, we look at the, the clerk and we say from our hearts, thank you so much, right? Or somebody is helping us do something, really appreciate 
um, from our hearts or give a hug to somebody a little bit longer than we might. Or, you know, there's just so many ways where we can hold space, where we can take another moment of time um, because those moments are going to be gone. And over and over again, when I hear people talk about when they're with people who help um, in hospice and, and work with people who are at the end of their lives, often these people, if they are regretting anything, it's regretting not having more moments with other people and not having shared their feelings with them, of not having been a better listener, of not have been able to create better connections with that brother, that sister, that child, that parent. And <clears throat> so if we can realize this now, and start creating those opportunities of moments, it is in those extended moments that we start to feel the day. When we move out beyond the robotic movement of our interactions with others and become intentional with how we interact, and that will help us feel the day. And then number three is in our interactions with the environment around us. And for me, this is going out and intentionally sitting and being quiet and just looking at the world around me, just looking at the leaves moving in the wind, just looking at the birds flying by, looking at the butterflies, looking at something moving across the sky in the wind. Um, and it's taking a moment to realize the miracle of that leaf and the miracle of that flower and the miracle of that bird that it's alive in this huge universe. And even in, in you know, the, the parts that we know of, this kind of life doesn't exist all over the place. It's just here on earth. I'm sure there's other places where there's life, but as far as what we know from what we can see, life like this isn't just a dime a dozen. It's a miracle that we're all here. And your life is a miracle and my life is a miracle and the trees are a miracle and my birds are a miracle. And when we begin to feel the miracle of life in the world around us, in our environment, we begin to feel the day. And then number four, which I've forgotten for a moment, is, ah, is service to others. And this is something that I realized I have um, really been doing since I was very young. I, I, I have really kind of been a teacher my whole life. I started teaching even when I was in third grade, I would go down to the younger grades, first grade, and I would read at story time. Um, I would work in the kitchen in the, at the, at the school. Um, I, I did, you know, service by work, singing in a youth choir. Um, and then I taught ballet. And then I did other kinds of teaching. You know, of course, as a, as, a, as a professor, I taught in academia for a long time. And now I'm doing other kinds of teaching. And when I teach, when I give my, what I've learned to other people, I become alive. I become, it, it's like the joy just starts to happen. And I can feel that. And that that lets me be able to feel the day when I'm doing something where I feel like I'm, I'm working to connect with other people, even if it's on a video like this, you know, I look and I see the light from the video and I say that light is a real person that, that I'm speaking through this camera to somebody who is watching this later on and connecting that my heart to the heart of that person. And that helps me feel the day. <laughs> having doing something for other people getting out of side of my own head getting outside of who I am getting outside of my thoughts and doing something for other people or even doing things for my birds or for the rabbits the bunnies um, the squirrels the other birds outside throwing things and then being able to go out and look at them later as they're going and eating all the seeds and stuff I put out you know it makes me feel good knowing I did something for other people 
Um, the balance of that is remembering to give to myself first because for so long in giving, doing service to other people, sometimes we get it where we have to do service, do service, do service. And then it becomes more of a routine and more of a stress and more of the weight of the world upon us rather than this thing that comes from our heart. So there is always that balance of not taking on the weight of the world in the opportunities of doing service from our heart. But when we can do that, again, that helps us feel the day. And then finally, the fifth one is to celebrate what's going on, is to feel gratitude, right? Is to, at the end of the day, reflect back. What did I do? Who did I connect with? Who did I bring a little joy to just by smiling at them today? You know, what, what kind of service did I give? What were my successes? What were my failures that I learned from? And then feel those emotions that come up and, re and feel the interactions that you had. And, and don't, and again, be the observer. Don't be critical and mean to yourself. Well, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have, you know, we don't need that. Feel the learning that came out if something didn't go quite the way you wanted to. And that's okay. Feel the joy that you may have produced in somebody else and celebrate that celebrate who you are celebrate the uniqueness of everything that you can do and everything that you did do for me those five things help me celebrate life and soar free it reminds me to get out of my own head to get out of the beliefs that want to hold me back the beliefs i have taken on about who i am from these external sources and, and, and realize that I have the ability to change those beliefs, that I can be whoever I decide I want to be. And that other people, it's okay if they don't understand that. <laughs> it's perfectly okay. It's me who's going to be this person, not them. They don't have to be, I don't want them to be me. I want to be uniquely me. And I don't want to be them and I don't want them to be me. And so in giving the grace for me to be me, I can give the grace for other people to be who they want to be. And again, it's not that I feel this every day, 24 seven, feeling this is something we work on every day. It's through you know, our meditation, through our mindset, through our mindfulness actions, through our self-talk, um, through our learning, our coaching, you know, everything we do for ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis helps us step into that place more often throughout the day. And as we find ourselves outside of it, just going through the motions, suddenly realizing, wow, I haven't really felt the day in a little bit, then stepping into that feeling the day. So, you know, it's okay if you're not there all the time. It's okay if maybe you're there just for five minutes to start. And then maybe the next day it's another minute. And then maybe throughout the day, you're able to take more time to say, to take a pause and say, okay, how can I feel the day right now? What can I do that is interactive with myself? What can I do where I take an extra moment or two with another person and sit in that space with them a little bit longer? How can I enjoy my environment around me and, 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 you know, celebrate the miracle of life itself. And then also, what can I do that is of service to other people, other beings, other whatever it is, and then celebrate those moments. Those five things are going to help you feel the day. You're not going to be in a robotic movement. It can be scary at first, and that's okay. Acknowledge that fear, step into it, and keep moving forward because on the other side of that is magnificent joy and wonder and, and, and feeling. And through that, you get to learn how to celebrate life and soar free. So I hope you have a most magnificent Friday and rest of the weekend and celebrate life and soar free.